It is the 23rd of June 2014 and this is the 10th development vlog for Glowbreaker version 2. So what have I done today? Well I fixed that issue of not being able to set the texture of a double brick when it's collided with a ball to a single brick. And let's just show you how I did that. Because it may be of use to you guys. So first of all in the game scene, a bit more has been abstracted as slowly it is getting abstracted out. Um actually a lot of this can just be yeah, it can be deleted. But yeah, I just created two functions in the brick manager, one called destroy single brick and one called switch to single brick. So what was in here had just been abstracted to these destroy single brick and the switch to single brick. So what we do is we create a local sprite and then we assign that the get the node of the physics body of the shape from the contact the physics contact and then we cast that to a sprite and that basically whatever we do to this sprite local sprite here will affect this the original sprite that was added which is fantastic and i figured this out from looking at the original version for Glowbreaker because they, they use Objective-C and Box2D but a lot of it was still valid and so I was able to modify it to suit C++ and to slightly suit the physics world but a bit of a tinkering and I was able to get that done which was great so and then in here this just sets the texture based on whatever the brick was and then like I said the destroy single brick is the same implemented the game win scene uh, no actually that's the little problem right there i implemented the game over scene but this should have actually been the game win scene because obviously when you destroy all the bricks you go to the game win scene not the game over scene so i've just seen this i will actually fix this afterwards actually it's literally going to take a few like a minute i'll fix it right now so you can just see it Game win scene. So that is mine, but okay, that's, that needs to turn that to game win. Game over, I need to get the definition and then the main menu. Game win. Game over, I need to get this function. Game win. Then need to go to game over scene dot h. Copy actually cut this out. Put this in the game win scene. Should the copy and paste. I mean cut and paste the private as well. And that is there. That should all the arrows should go. So the next part is the game scene. And here I've just got to change this to game over. I mean game win. From game over, and I'm gonna change what it flew, change it to make it a game win. So, yeah, that is great. I will actually test that afterwards because this is just in a certain position at the moment. Oh, yeah, I've also changed this slightly. So, in the brick manager, originally I had a little variable that just kept track of how many number of bricks there were in total and when you destroyed a brick that just decremented it by one and i changed it because i had an issue with that for some reason when there were loads of let's say balls on the screen and there was a lot of stuff happening i think there wasn't enough or the the detection of when a brick was breaking and how many balls that collided with it was sort of sort of overwriting each other so i think if maybe three balls collided with a brick it would maybe de detect that three bricks are destroyed even though there's only one destroyed i think that might have been the reason but either way it was cancelling the lab i mean like uh, giving the signal that the game had been won sorry about that it was giving the signal that the game had been won but the game hadn't been won which was like really really annoying so I changed it so in the game scene just iterate over all the bodies and if there is a single brick or a double brick left then I just set this local boolean to all bricks destroyed equals false but if it is true then it flicks to the game win scene and this here I was trying to experiment with that issue that I was having where the balls were losing momentum or the what they, they didn't have a consistent velocity by trying to set the velocity y always the same one after a collision 
didn't go so well look kind of nasty actually so yeah what else did i implement uh, there was a game win didn't do anything on paddle nothing here and that was it really that that was today done obviously tested it on android as well we'll just reposition the bricks slightly and let's just show you it running I did this yesterday so it runs on a Mac the screen obviously it's too big for this size but you should be able to get the rough the loads of balls but yeah you can't see all of it but it's you can see you can understand what is happening and we are thinking of potentially putting this for Mac as well and one other thing I actually want to show you game scene um, we had an edge body originally an edge box here but the, we had a problem with the edge box because we had the width at about I think one uh, the edge box border width was one uh, I don't think this is pixels though I'm not too sure if you know what this is let me know because I'm intrigued by like what the unit of measurement is because I thought it would be pixels and when I put values in it doesn't seem to be pixels but yeah either way uh, what was happening when the balls were traveling too fast it, they weren't being detected that they it wasn't detecting that it was colliding with the air so they was going through the edge so I put a ridiculously thick border it is 25 it is a definition and if I just go back to game scene and what I do here is I just position the edge or create the edge box slightly bigger than the screen so that way there's not a big sort of dead zone so, um, so when the ball bounces it doesn't look like it's just not hitting the edge but this way it does look like it's hitting the edge so yeah that's a little thing little thing that you might want to take note of obviously you can just message us if you want some more information regarding this topic or any other topic in general yeah that is it for today yeah, so just implemented setting the texture for the bricks implemented the game wincing or just fix the game wincing now in tomorrow we're going to look at implementing level select screen look at adding a pause menu and the sort of pause menu system that we want to work aka how we want to pause it if you're thinking of some sort of gesture implement live code and also visually implement that as well so we haven't still decided yet because it's going to be different compared to version one most likely we're also going to implement unlocking levels as well because obviously you don't want all the levels unlocked and we're also going to start working on something else pretty cool as well it's something that we don't want to mention yet it's just it's a little bit of a secret for Glowbreaker, but you will f find out very soon that is it for the 10th vlog if you have any questions feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk the email will be in the description you can comment on this video or just directly message us via youtube whatever you feel comfortable with and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a nice day